tough. Yeah, it's you spread good. the legs out. Right. There you go. Right. Okay. So, um, so you maybe already have some sense that it's a twisting kind of thing. Okay, I want to ask you one other thing. How many of you have played on a teeter-totter or a seesaw? Or have they been completely removed from all playgrounds? Okay, so you've played on one. And if you are, that, that's just a, that's a game of balancing torques is what it is. So if you are teeter-tottering with your younger sibling who say weighs half what you weigh, which one of you has to sit closer to the fulcrum? The fulcrum is the balance point. So like this would be the fulcrum right here. Does the heavy person or the light person get closer to the fulcrum? Heavy, heavy person. So the lighter person, you can, you can balance um, a heavy weight with a light weight if the lighter weight is farther out. And it's because of this thing called torque. So torque is to... Um, is to rotation as force is to motion. And what we're going to do, I recorded your pre-lecture this morning, but I, um, but I went long and I didn't get to the last slide, so I have to redo it. So pre-lecture will be posted later this afternoon. Okay, anyway, torque is the rotational analog of force. And we use the Greek letter tau. Um, and, and sororities and fraternities call it ta, but mathematicians and scientists call it tau. I don't know why. They just do. And um, tau, torque, is equal to, um, it's equal to the product of the lever arm times uh, the force. And the lever arm is the perpendicular, that's the symbol for perpendicular, distance between the force and the fulcrum. is um, the balance point. Now, for this lab, you are going to um, make a drawing for each case. And we're going to do case one together. And I'm going to get you started on case two. Um, and then I, I'm hoping you can get through case three on your own. And I'm going to give you a little bit of direction on the last thing. So you're going to do four different uh, variations of the same experiment, kind of. Um, so you'll see in the data table, there's a, there's a column for you to make a drawing. And I'm going to make the drawing for case one and everything you see on that drawing, that's what I want to see for the other cases. Okay, let's see. Um, let me tell you any more about that. Oh, I guess I should tell you the SI units for torque are meter newtons. Those are the SI units distance times force. But um, for our lab, we're going to use, um, we're, we're just going to use grams and centimeters. So for today's lab, we're going to use grams times centimeters. Because, here's the deal, we're going to be balancing torques, and, um, and if, since 
what we're going to be using as our forces is the weight of something. So m g times a distance. Let's say m1 g times d1. m1 g would be the weight of mass 1. Let's say that's going to equal m2 g times d2 plus m2 m3 g times d3. In general, this will be the character of our equations. And check it out. You can divide everything by g, and it still remains an equality. So you can have m1d equals m2d2 plus m3d3. You with me? So we're not going to convert to newtons. And we might as well not convert to meters either. We're just going to leave it in grams and centimeters, OK? And I did not put the units in, in every place where you should have them. So don't be writing down numbers without having units or you'll lose points. Whenever it is, it bubbles up to the top and I get it graded. By the way, you did turn in last week's lab to Dr. Da or the one before break into Dr. Daniels, yes? Okay. Okay, so I guess we want to talk about one other thing here. Since we're talking about rotation, we're going to talk about clockwise torques. Um, which I'm going to write as CW, and counterclockwise torques, which is CC. I think CC is what I use in here. Okay. So you got to pay attention to the letters. Now, As your seesaw or your teeter-totter, you're going to be using, you're going to be using um, a meter stick. But it's not, it's not like your average meter stick because to make it more challenging, somebody, I don't know who, has drilled holes in the end of the meter stick. Can, you see those little cylinder holes in the end? And they poured... Um, molten metal down in those holes in some of them. So it makes it heavier on one end than the other. So you would expect the center mass of the meter stick to be right at 50 if it were uniform mass distribution. But since it's heavier, um, and some will be heavier on one side, some on the other. So some of you may have a center mass of the meter stick like at 47 centimeters. Some of you may have it at 53 or somewhere in between. So your first order of business is going to be to determine the center mass of the meter stick. And you can do that with your finger. And you know what? That, that looks to me like it's balancing at 50. And just, just on a side note here, if you put your fingers on either end and put but put one farther out from the center mass than the other one, and you try to move your fingers to meet in the middle, they, they won't both move until you get them an equal distance from the center mass. You should try it sometime. I mean, I know it looks like I was just faking that, but I was trying to move my right finger with my left finger, and my right finger won't move until, until I get the other one 10 centimeters away from the center mass. Um, it's because I'm supporting more of the weight with this one until they get equal distance. All right, so um, the first thing that you're going to do, and it may be the most challenging, is to balance the meter stick at its center mass. And I'm a little confused here because it looked to me like it was balancing at 50, but I just can't believe that's correct. So I'm going to try uh, 
three.